In this video, we're going to discuss the convergence of the method, and we're also going to put together the program to approximate the solution. Let's start with uh, pointing out that there is a possible misconception at this point, uh, and I would like to emphasize that UH, U1 to UJ if you prefer, is not a discretization of the solution. Uh, it does not hold the values of U at the nodes of the grid. Uh, what it does is, well, hopefully, it approximates the values of U of X, J. And hopefully, when H, the step, goes to zero, then we hope that if H is, is small, then the approximation would be better. And the smaller is H, hopefully, the better will be the approximation. But we have not said at any time that uj was equal to u of xj. If that was the case, then of course, uh, at that point, everything would be, would, would be done. I mean, you know, there, was, there would be nothing to do. We, would, you know, we, we solved the linear system before and would have the uj and that, that's it. No, but, but that's not the case. Uh, what we have done is discretize the problem. We have not discretized the solution. So uh, what we'll need to do is to compare that approximation uj and the actual value of u at point xj of the grid and verify that uh, one approximates the other. And, and of course, uh, by approximate, we need to, to be precise and we'll need to see if we have convergence. Well, basically, everything we usually do when we have a numerical method. All right, so let me define the projection of a function on our mesh, on our grid, if you prefer. So that's very simple. I mean, that's called pH. And pH takes a function, uh, a continuous function, 0, 1, and 0, 1, and gives you the vector with j components that is the evaluation of that function on the point of the grid uh, from x1 to xj. I'm, I'm not including the two, the two ends, x, x0, and, 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 x, and, 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 um, uh, and xj plus 1, which is basically 0 and 1. So um, what I'm doing is simply looking at the value of the function uh, at uh, all the points inside of our interval on the grid. So that's vector of dimension j. Now, we, ha we have already used this, uh, this projection uh, without mentioning it when we created the vector fh. Remember the f1 to fj that was simply evaluating the function at the points of the grid. We do the same thing with ch uh, that was um, uh, c uh, c1 to cj. Now, ch here is a vector. We had another notation uh, earlier that was a diagonal matrix with the, with the values in the diagonal. These are just two different things. Just have, we just just call that ch. That's just, just a notation. So, uh, so what I'm saying here is that we have used this projection uh, onto the mesh uh, before for f and c. We do not have uh equals pi h of u, as we just said. We, we don't, in general, I mean, if we do, well, that, of course, I mean, that, that's a wonderful thing. I mean, we would just open champagne, uh, but, but usually uh, there is no reason uh, to have equality, and in general, we don't have uh equals pi h u. And, of course, uh, what we are interested in doing is to measure the gap between, uh, well, uh, which is somehow our vector of approximations, u1 to uj, and the actual values that we're trying to approximate, which is the vector ux1 to uxj. So what we're, try what, what, what we're interested in is this vector u1 minus ux1 all the way down to uj minus uxj, the approximation u1 to uj, and the actual value of u, the unknown, ux1 to uxj. And of course, the definition of a convergent method is that the limit of this eh uh, goes to zero as h goes to zero. And you see here I have put a norm h, or I could put norm j if you prefer, but the point is that it's a norm on rj. So when you have 
j goes to plus infinity, which is the same as h goes to zero, you need to realize that the norm changes as well. So eh is a vector uh, with a dimension j, uh, and when j goes to plus infinity, well, obviously the length of this vector goes, I mean, it gets bigger, and obviously the norm on this vector space changes as well. Uh, in addition to the limit, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with what we're doing now. Uh, if uh, the, the limit is actually, if it's a big O of HP, we will say that the method is of order P. Let's talk about consistency. Let me define curly EH as the matrix AH multiplied by the vector pi HU, which is the vector composed of U, X1, all the way to U, X, J, all the values of U on the point of the grid, minus FH, which is the vector composed of all the values of F on the, on, on, on the grid as well. Okay, so uh, we will say that the finite difference method is consistent with the PDE if the limit of the infinity norm of the vector uh, curly EH goes to zero as H goes to zero. Now, you know that the infinity norm for a vector is simply the, 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 the maximum uh, values of, of its, uh, the absolute values of its components. So basically you take your curly EH um, and you look at the, the, all the components, the one with the with the worst case scenario, I mean, you know, the, the one with the, with the, the ones with the, with, the, with the largest value, basically, well, that needs to go to zero. So, so we're saying that this, this limit needs to go to zero. All right, when that is the case, again, it uh, basically means that the finite difference method is consistent. And if uh, the limit is in such a way that it's actually big O of HP, it means that uh, it is consistent uh, uh, in, um, um, in the order of P. All right, so uh, what does this mean? What it means, what consistency means, it means that if you plug in, in, in your method, the actual values of a few, I mean, basically, instead of having an approximation, uh, a vector of approximation uh, of a few, you actually put in the real values, the exact values of few, uh, then that needs to go to zero as h goes to zero. That, that, that's what it means. Uh, so in other words, uh, what I'm going to say doesn't make mathematical sense, but just so, so you understand, uh, what I'm saying is, uh, forget about the approximation. When you put in, uh, in, in, this, in, the, in this finite dimensional uh, system here, instead of putting in the approximations, you actually put in the real values of u, then that needs to go to zero when the mesh size goes to zero. That, that's what consistency means. And of course, it's uh, uh, consistent with the previous use of the word consistency. Uh, no pun intended or pun intended, I don't know if the pun is or not, but no matter what, uh, that consistency is consistent with the other use of consistency in numerical schemes. Uh, in our earlier problem, we had this, uh, this equation, and uh, if we took c uh, equals zero, which means basically we, we, we kill that, that term uh, here, and that's all, all we have basically is the Poisson's equation in dimension one minus u second equals f, then uh, u is in c4, and, and what we have is uh, basically the second order central difference quotient is a finite difference approximation of the second derivative of order two. We've seen that in, in, in the previous videos, and so what we have is this equation. Now, by saying this, we could actually do, we could actually do, do, do much better by using the Taylor-Lagrange inequality. We could be more precise, and we could mention that uh, this can be bounded uh, by the norm, I mean, the, the, the norm infinity of the fourth derivative of u, times h2 divided by 12. So uh, that, that, that's what we would get, right? Uh, and so what we're saying is the finite difference method is consistent uh, with the PDE in order to. And I would like to make a remark here, which is that if for some reason u is a polynomial of degree 3 or lower, then obviously the fourth derivative will be zero, which means that we actually have equality. The remainder vanishes in this case. Now let's talk about stability. Let's consider a numerical method, which is AH UH equals FH, where UH is the unknown, FH is the input data, this right-hand side, 
and AH is a non-singular matrix. Okay, so obviously what we're going to want to do is to solve the linear system to find new H. Now, we're going to consider the norm of the matrix, which is induced by the norm, uh, by a norm on RJ. Uh, that's something that you know. If for some reason you forgot about it, then this is something that we will review in the next chapter. Uh, but basically what, 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 what the norm of the matrix means is that when you do the norm of AX, then that will be bounded by the norm of the matrix uh, times the norm of X. That's why it depends on the norm I choose on RJ. Now, we will say that the numerical method is stable if there exists a constant such that the norm of the matrix AH inverse is smaller than C. And that constant will need to be independent on of J or H, if you want. Okay, so I look at the inverse of the matrix, we know it's not singular, we'd better not be singular because I'm trying to solve linear system here. So uh, I'm looking at the inverse of this matrix, I take the norm of this matrix, and that has to be bounded by a constant independent of J or of H. Stability will mean that small errors in the input data FH will not get out of control. That what it means, and that what it already meant before. So this stability is consistent with the other stability we had defined uh, before when we defined numerical scheme. At this point, some of you are probably thinking, well, I don't understand why I need to specify which norm I choose, since uh, Rj is a space of finite dimension, and we all know that in a finite dimensional space, all the norms are equivalent, which, by the way, means that all the convergences are the same. Uh, this is true. However, uh, what we have to have is a C that is independent of H, so or, or, or J, if you prefer. So we can have stability for a norm, and maybe not for another norm. So what we're saying is, it will be necessary to say which norm we take for stability and letter for convergence. So let's talk about convergence. Okay, let's consider EH, which is, as you know, uh, the difference between the vector that I have, that I have computed uh, with my linear system, that's U1 to UJ, this is the vector of my approximations, versus minus the actual values of u, so the projection of u onto the grid. As a, remi as a, as a reminder, convergence uh, means that we want eh to go to zero. Now I apply ah to eh, so I'm going to have ah uh minus ah pi h u. And uh, I can replace, of course, uh, ah uh by fh since we have this equality. So here is what I have, and of course, it means that AH EH is minus curly EH, which I have just defined before when we talked about consistency. Now, that means that EH is minus AH inverse curly EH, right? As a reminder, uh, AH is non singular. This means that the norm of EH is the norm of, uh, well, minus uh, AH inverse curly EH, which, of course, I can drop the negative sign here because I have a norm, uh, and I can also write that this is going to be smaller than the norm of the matrix AH inverse times the norm of uh, curly EH. Okay, uh, so what do I have here? Uh, suppose that I have stability then the norm of this matrix, AH inverse, will be smaller than C. Suppose I have consistency, then the limit of curly EH will go, when H goes to zero, will be zero. Obviously, it means that the limit of the norm of EH goes to zero when H goes to zero. In other words, we have convergence. So we've just established that a finite difference method that is both consistent and stable is convergent. 
So what we have is we go from the PDE to the final difference method, and that's basically we, we need to make sure that when we do this, uh, there is consistency. And then we go into the we go to the solution, uh, and that of course will require stability. Now, if I consider AH, the matrix associated to the Poisson's equation in dimension one, that is minus u second equals f, then the matrix AH inverse will have an infinity norm that is bounded by 1 8th, which obviously is independent of j. Now, it means that uh, we have stability, and we also had consistency uh, of order 2 for this uh, numerical scheme, for that uh, finite difference method. So, we can conclude that we have convergence and even convergence in order 2. Now, let's uh, actually compute uh, for good the, the solution of this, of this equation, of the Poisson's equation. So again, we are considering minus u second equal f uh, on 0, 1 with directly by the condition u of 0 equals 0 and u of 1 equals 0. And I will just choose f equal 1 to simplify things, but of course, uh, you can adapt what we're going to do to any f of your choosing. So let's implement the final difference method uh, for this uh, equation. Uh, first, I'm going to import NumPy, uh, then I'm going to import the library that will allow me to work with sparse matrices. I don't want to store a bunch of zeros, so I will use this uh, possibility. Uh, then I will use matplotlib, I uh, will import that uh, library since I'm going to print and to plot uh, the results. Uh, j will be equal to 10, uh, the step h will be 1 over j plus 1, and at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the matrix AH. So first, I'm going to define H2AH, uh, and then I will divide by H uh, square, and I will get AH. So to build AH, uh, or H2AH, what I'm first going to do is to define what is on the diagonal, and that is basically a bunch of two, a bunch of twos. Above and below have negative ones. Now I'm going to use a command that will uh, create a matrix, but I will store it in a sparse way, and then format is CSR, that is a way to compress that, that, that matrix. And so I'm saying, okay, side diagonal is just below, that's negative 1, diagonal 0, uh, that's diagonal, and 1 is just above the diagonal, and that's the, the syntax to actually build h to ah, and when I divide by h squared, then I get my matrix ah. Um, um, I'm not going to comment that much on the syntax, you can look it up if you want. Uh, then I'm going to build B, uh, which is basically just, 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 just once, since it's uh, the function 1 evaluated on the grid, so that's just once. And then I'm going to compute the solution. So to compute the solution, I just need to solve uh, a, a linear system. And obviously, I'm going to use uh, the, this library that I just called to solve it using the fact that it's sparse. Uh, of course, I could do it without the sparse library, but that would be too bad if j is really large, then that would be a problem. Okay, now let's plot the solutions. Uh, I'm going to uh, create x, which is basically uh, the points of my, of my grid. Uh, I'm going to add 0 at both ends because I have directly boundary conditions. So basically, I have my j plus 2 points. I know that u basically uh, w w was um, um, computed on the j nodes inside. So I add 0 at both ends. And uh, here, is, uh, the, here is the solution that I found. So, uh, well, obviously, I mean, I know the solution uh, because we already computed it with the finite element methods, plus we could even compute it by hand, and it's obviously the solution I was expecting. So this is the solution I have for j equal 10. Of course, if I am to increase j or to reduce h, then the precision, the accuracy will be better. Here's what I have for 100. So basically, you can just run the program, just change the very beginning j equals 10 by j equal 100. Uh, this time, I enter the problem completely correctly. I mean, I do that for the finite element method, but for, for the finite difference method, I uh, actually uh, built the matrices in the right way. Uh, and uh, here is j equals 500. And here is um, basically the error uh, that we're making versus h. So when h goes to 0, it goes in this direction. Uh, and uh, you can see that the error is getting smaller and smaller. Instead of 
putting it in this graph like this, I'm going to put it in a log scale, a logarithm scale, and what you can see is very, very much a line, right? I mean, and I did that for quite a few points. Uh, and uh, here is what I, what looks, we, that looks like we have like a, a slope here on, on the log scale graph, which is about two, almost two, which is uh, consistent with the fact that we, we said earlier that the order of the method was 2. So you see, when you uh, divide by 10 uh, your, 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 your step, then you divide by 100 your error. So that's, that's nice. And if you want, you can even like, you know, see how we, we did these graphs. Here is a way to download uh, the program that actually allowed us to make these graphs, and you can uh, look at this uh, more in details if you want.